The holiday of Pentecost has its origins in the Jewish harvest festival called Shavuot. Fifty days after the second day of Passover, Jewish pilgrims would go to Jerusalem and offer the first fruits of the harvest. On this Shavuot day, the writer of Acts, traditionally attributed to Luke, describes the dramatic and powerful gift of the Holy Spirit given to the Twelve Apostles. This Pentecost is understood as a reversal of the Tower of Babel. While God creates different languages in response to the Tower, at Pentecost, God removes all language barriers. And the prophecy by Joel is seen to be fulfilled as the Spirit is poured out onto all people. Pentecost is the start of something new. The scripture reading today is from the book of Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. <laughs> then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. <laughs> No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. 
Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You know, in my tradition, um, we usually stand for whatever the reading is before the sermon, so I'm very glad that this is not the case here because y'all would have been standing for quite some time. Um, It is a great pleasure to be preaching to First Congregational today. I have a deep love for this community. It was wonderful to be your seminary intern a year ago, But unfortunately, I wasn't able to celebrate Pentecost with you then, um, which is a shame because Pentecost is my favorite church holiday. Um, So it's great to see how much you celebrate this holiday with gusto here. Every church I know celebrates Pentecost a little bit differently. Today we have pinwheels and red ribbons and wonderful special music. Uh, Other communities celebrate new members on Pentecost, and for other churches, this is the graduation day for confirmation students or a big day for baptisms. In my home church, we commemorate Pentecost during the reading. As the lector reads that the apostles begin speaking in other languages, people from the congregation follow suit and anyone who speaks a language other than English begins to call out. These varied traditions all display a hint of the mystery of the Pentecost event. What are we celebrating here today? How do we understand the actions of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit, this third person of the Trinity, has long fascinated me. And yet, even as I stand here to preach, I know that no words can do the Holy Spirit justice. Our scriptures seldom speak of the Holy Spirit for that reason, I think. How can one write about the mighty power of the invisible Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit in this reading is compared to fire and air. The Spirit is like fire, illuminating our faith journey with God, and yet one cannot draw too close to the flame without being overwhelmed by the power of it. Fire is passed from candle to candle, person to person, just as the Spirit inflames our faith through the witness of one another. And the Holy Spirit is like air. It's around us constantly, and yet we are seldom aware of its presence unless it is actively moving as wind. The air is both near to us, caressing our skin, and far away miles above us. The air gives us life with each breath. But the symbols that we do have for the Holy Ghost reveal as much as they obscure. As I read through the account in Acts, I can almost sense the writer's wonder and confusion 
as he tries and struggles to describe the indescribable. It seems clear that Luke's language falters and fails as he writes what looked like flames, a sound like the roaring of a windstorm. I picture Luke, pen in hand, writing and scribbling, crossing out, writing again, different descriptions of the Holy Spirit trying to make sense of what happened that day. Even the tongues of flame leave a lot of room for creative imagination. Something that looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared, but what does it mean that it settled on them? Traditional interpretations have the flames on top of the apostles' heads, but that's just a stylistic choice. Did the flames of the Spirit enter their throat or coat their skin? Did the apostles appear to be like a second burning bush, surrounded by fire, yet not consumed? There is so much about Pentecost that alights the imagination, that hints at the mystery and the power of God. For no written account can do justice to the experiential nature of the Holy Spirit. The images, symbols, metaphors of the Holy Spirit are always lacking somehow. For words fail to capture the incomprehensible and awesome nature of the divine. But though the Holy Spirit is invisible to us, we certainly experience the Spirit's power at work. Those in Jerusalem assuredly did. Jerusalem was packed with pilgrims within the walls of the city, bringing offerings of the first fruits of the harvest to the temple the massive limestone structure on the mount that dominates the cityscape. Vendors hawk their ware along the narrow and cramped streets. The scent of grain and wheat fill the air. The bleedings of rams and lambs for sacrifice drown out the many different languages being spoken throughout the city. Jerusalem is never so alive as it is on a festival day, and especially a pilgrimage holiday like Shavuot. Suddenly, there is a roaring noise. The pilgrims hear this rush of wind, perhaps fearing that a building has collapsed. As they hurry to where the sound originated, instead of destruction, they see 12 people joyfully exuberant, stumbling under the influence of something. Now, there is no scent of alcohol on their breaths, but they are so giddy and alive. What else could it be? But then they begin to speak. Now, it is not so uncommon to hear itinerant preachers on the streets of Jerusalem, particularly on a high holiday. The pilgrims are used to the preachers speaking in other tongues and can brush them off. But these people speak their very own language, their own dialect. They seem on fire for this man named Jesus, preaching about his life and death and resurrection. Their powerful testimony burns brightly in the hearts of those listening. And as the preachers speak, there is no barrier to being understood or to understanding. There's simply conversation. And then conversion as 3,000 are baptized in the name of Jesus. Pilgrims who come to Jerusalem on a festival day remain there, finding their lives forever changed. The Holy Spirit is among them as they tell their life experiences, bear witness to the grace of God, worship, and share food and resources together. 
community is formed where there were once only strangers. So, what happened on Pentecost? Do we celebrate the gift of good preaching? The birthday of the church? The gift of tongues? While the ecstatic and unintelligible tongues central to the Pentecostal movement are referenced in scriptures, the passage today does not describe the gift of tongues, but the gift of comprehension. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the gift of understanding each other. People who previously could not speak to one another had all barriers removed. And a deep sense of awe comes, came over the people at that first Pentecost as they became not only followers of a man named Jesus, but a community of believers in the risen one. It is easy to forget that the church did not begin with Peter or Paul, or even Jesus himself. The Holy Spirit gave birth to this community of faith. And it is the Holy Spirit who continually cares for us as a mother, her, her children. Every time we gather together, we celebrate Pentecost. Even if we do not have pinwheels and red ribbons in worship, each Sunday is a little Pentecost, a gathering of believers who, at our best moments, truly understand each other, listen to each other, learn from one another. Each Sunday, we recreate Pentecost, gathering to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church today. As the believers prayed together, broke bread together, shared all things in common, their witness is an example for us today. The truest way to celebrate Pentecost is to speak to one another's hearts, to form authentic community. Community is the action of the Holy Spirit made manifest. Now, we may not be able to see the Holy Spirit, but one needs only to look around and witness the Pentecost event still unfolding today. Look around you today. Look at your neighbors sitting beside you in the pews. Their presence is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and you are to them as well. Each time you reach out to your neighbor in the church or in the world, each time you strive to understand someone and be understood, Each time you share your gifts and pass on the fire of faith, the flame of Pentecost burns within you, and the gift of the Spirit continues on. If the Holy Spirit is like the wind, perhaps Pentecost is too. We cannot grasp the wind, but we feel its movement on our skin. The wind never stops blowing. The Spirit never stops moving. And the fire of Pentecost never goes out. Amen.